Well, hey, Becoming Me.TV, I'm so excited to introduce you to my friend, Jamie. Jamie, welcome to Becoming Me. Thank you. So excited you're here. And I've had the privilege of hearing bits and pieces of Jamie's story. Um, and I'm really excited for all of you to hear her story today, who she is and who she's becoming. Uh, so Jamie, to kick it off, like, who is Jamie? What are the fun things about you? Well, fun things. Uh... I like to create things. I like to take projects and renovate them and turn them into different things. I like to play sports, mm. especially football. I like anything that's like rough. Yeah. <laughs> and um, basketball, everything like that. I, um, but right now, pretty much, I play with cars and dinosaurs <laughs> and swings and trampolines and strollers and baby dolls and we make it work. So <laughs> you have your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> How many kids do you have? There's three. I have three, I mean, but they're just three and under. So Ooh. nine months, a nine month old girl, and then Willa Grace, and then two year old boy Avery, and three year old boy Luke. But they're best friends. The boys, they share a room, and that helps. And then my three-year-old plays with my nine-month-old a lot, because their personalities are a lot of alike. Um, they're spazzes, and so they have a lot of fun. <laughs> my two-year-old, he's an introvert, so as soon as there's a crowd for me, he starts going over here and playing. And so oh. He's like, I don't want any of that. That's he's fine. He's like my husband, so it's interesting to see how opposite their personalities yeah. can be. So, That's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. since you mentioned football, I obviously have a very important question. Who's your football team that you root for? Well, more collegiate, and it's Ohio State Buckeyes. <gasps> yes, I am with you there. I was born in Cleveland, and so I'm oh, Ohio State. All I was born in Pittsburgh, but I grew up in Ohio, and then I lived in Columbus for a little while. Yeah. That's so cool. So, yeah, I'll, cool. Never, I'll never teach her from that. Oh, no. You Every time I see a Ohio State sticker on someone's car here or a shirt, I'm like, oh, wait. And they're like, I know. Like, it really just excites me for the whole day. Yes. So it's, it's the Buckeyes. <laughs> with you. Oh, my goodness. We just bonded at a whole nother level. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, hey, why don't you take the next few minutes to just share your story, unpacking, you know, what's made you who you are today? Okay, well... A lot of us have dysfunctional families. I don't want to throw mine under the bus. They were very dysfunctional, a lot of abuse, um, of all types of abuse and alcoholism was involved. And uh, so my parents split when I was 12, which was actually a good thing for the most part. But then my mother had a hard time handling it. Mm. So uh, as she had to go through her process of healing for years, it kind of put us kids on the back burner. Mm. And um, we really looked after ourselves and made sure we had our needs met. Mm -hmm. And um, But with that, I put a lot of my energy into sports and to gymnastics and dance and cheerleading, softball and track, just whatever I could stay in to get around other environment. And I um, excelled in those things. And then as I grew up, I just still struggled with everything I was going through. I never knew I could talk to someone about it. It's a small town. And so um, when I was 17 and moved away to Columbus, I uh, attended Aveda for cosmetology. And um, during that season is when I had my first breakdown and I started mm -hmm. struggling with anorexia and then I started cutting myself with mm -hmm. self-harm. And um, I finished schooling and everything and then went to treatment, um, so the treatment center for that. And uh, then I kept struggling with that for about four years. Um, it was just really hard to break off enough to live a life. Um, so I was in, a, in and out of a lot of places, um, doctor-wise, and trying to get medications, fix it. And then um, I got desperate enough and applied to Mercy Ministries. Uh, I wasn't raised with believing family in Jesus, so I wasn't saved and I didn't know anything about that. And I went to Mercy and evidently learned a lot about it there. It's a Christian, it's a Christian treatment center. Mm -hmm. You don't pay for it. And so I went there for six to seven months and I um, got saved there. And it was a stepping stone. You don't get completely, you know, healed there, um, but it helps you get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I, at least I started learning about God. 
Um, after the treatment center, though, I got back around my old surroundings, and um, then a few months, I attempted suicide mm-hmm. because it just felt like I experienced this new life, but somehow I'm back in my old life, and um, it was really conflicting. And now, as I'm older and the knowledge of the Bible, I can see how it was spiritual warfare. But mm-hmm. that time, I didn't. And um, I obviously survived a suicide mm-hmm. attempt. It's in critical care. And then um, after that, I went to, to make a long story short, I ended up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and went to Bible college there for a couple of years. I did a two year full time internship and um, had an opportunity to start speaking to that mm-hmm. church and on TV about self-harm and suicide mm-hmm. eating disorders kind of help raise awareness and just to mm-hmm. share my testimony to give others hope that mm-hmm. they don't have to follow the statistics of what usually happens to those who have gone through yeah. sexual abuse and stuff like that and so um, and then after that I still struggled I had another relapse of anorexia and um I uh, had two weeks to live at one point, and so I was on a feeding tube after that for eight months, and uh, it took two years to get my body restored enough to eat normal foods, And uh, but we did it, mm-hmm. and uh, I was told I couldn't have kids, mm-hmm. and um, through all of this, I still kept sharing about what God can do because I was no longer self-harming. Mm-hmm. So at one point for my suicide attempt, I carved the word hated in my forearm, wow. uh, and now I have, let's see his glory tattooed oh over it, so you can't see it. And because um, I knew if God can deliver me from that, that the healing would come with the eating disorder. But there was a lot of things. I also drank a lot. I took pills. I did so many things to numb myself. And so I just knew that the healing would come. Mm-hmm. And um, so even though I was going through the battle again, and then... Um, my best friend at the time for a couple of years, we ended up getting married. Mm-hmm. And uh, four months after we were married, I was pregnant with my first child after being told we couldn't. Wow. And then three months after he was born, I was pregnant again, my second. And then after my second, we waited just a little bit longer, but not too much longer because they're close in age. And now we have a girl, a third. And, um, and so now I use system. I'm working with a nutritionist to lose my postpartum baby weight to make sure I do it healthy because mm-hmm. I still get the trigger sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I see center people or anorexic people before it would trigger me, I just feel like, oh, I have to get to that. But now I, it doesn't, I'm like, oh, I feel bad for them. Like I, mm-hmm. I hope they're getting help. I wonder if they're getting help. And um, I need for in a place where I can approach them or not, mm-hmm. I would. But um, it's really awesome to see that God has given me that and and he's giving me the people to walk with me to help me lose weight, help me be healthy. And I'm working with one of the best nutritionists in the city and the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's stuff I never knew before. I was never taught before about food. And I I had the struggle since I was in fourth grade, honestly. Mm -hmm. So I really knew nothing different. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... It's been really cool because my mind started going back to the old ways because it's all it knew. It was wired that yeah. way. But then as I started learning these different things from my nutritionist, I call her my myth buster. Then it's rewiring my brain mm. to then, oh, this is the new normal, the new mm. normal. And so um, it's been pretty cool. And um, I've actually, since I have my associates in ministry, I wanted to do more to help people. So I've actually... Um, started life coaching now I went through classes with that for certification and uh it has been amazing Mm -hmm. I love life coaching it's uh therapy usually takes you from negative 10 to neutral Mm -hmm. to feeling like you're Mm -hmm. not in that pit anymore but sometimes people have a hard time getting from the neutral to the plus mm-hmm. 10, the, the life they want. So then that's where I come in and I help with engaging questions and accountability and action plans to get you to where you want mm-hmm. to be. And sometimes we dabble back in a little bit of the therapeutic realm just for like memory sake or consulting or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then we go back into moving forward. And uh, it has been incredible to witness the transformation that life coaching brings in. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine doing anything different but having the uh, ministry background that helps me 
to also minister to people in a different way um, than if I didn't have it. So, because for me, Jesus is the everlasting hope. So I don't get hopeless with my clients, you know? Absolutely. And so I believe in them completely, which I think helps move them along too. But wow. it's been really cool. So that's wow. kind of Jamie without a lot of things, but... <laughs> Wow. I mean, thank you for sharing your story and unpacking your journey. And I mean, just that yeah. seeing your new tattoo and the new life um, that you have and how you are passionately pursuing becoming who God made Jamie to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so inspiring. Um, and I know that there are so many women who are tuning into Becoming Me TV who struggle with so many similar things and we just don't talk about it. So I yeah. love that you're bringing freedom that you know, talking about this brings freedom and then you can take that next step. Um, Mm -hmm. I love that. So, you know, if you were sitting across from another woman having coffee, tea, a smoothie, um, what would you say to encourage her on her own becoming journey? It would be to do the next right thing Mm -hmm. because there's so many times we slip and we think we just you know, threw it all away or we made too many mistakes. I would, and I still do that. I'm like, that was not the best decision I made. Then I'm like, okay, well, it's the next right thing. And then I do it the next right thing. And then for one, two, or two, I guess, don't give up Mm. because we have God and he is always going to make things that look bad turn for good for him. If we love him and for seeking him. Mm. And I've seen that time and time and time and time again in my own life. And uh, miracle after miracle. And so sometimes it doesn't look like that mm. at all. I understand because I've walked through major depression and postpartum mm. depression. And it just, you don't want to get out of bed. You can't mm. see yourself brushing your teeth, literally. You sometimes don't brush your teeth. And, but you know, it's another day will come. And mm. another day, and it'll get better. And um, keep your eyes on Jesus. You know, mm. just keep doing the next right thing against all your feelings. You'll, you'll get there. So, Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Jamie, thank you for sharing your story, who you yeah. are, who you're becoming, and just that truth, you know, when we do that next right thing. Um, and really, that's what we need to do to become. If we don't take that next step and do that next right thing, we won't become who God made us to be. So that's huge. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Now, if somebody was watching and they were like, man, I really resonate with Jamie. I resonate with her story. And I'd be interested in, in learning more about her life coaching. How can somebody connect with you online? My website, I took it down recently to change a couple things okay. to put it back up um, because I'm also adding an outreach mission to it now to help spread awareness for self-harm, eating disorders, depression, and postpartum depression in the workforces. Mm. So I'm fixing that page so I can put it all back up there again. So in the meantime, until that's up, they can follow me on Instagram for one. They can always direct message me and it's just Jamie Evers, J-A-I-M-E-E-V-O-R-S. Or they can email me at jamieeversclc at gmail.com. Perfect. And um, I'll, I'll get it to my phone and I'll respond. But my website um should be completely back up in about three days and today is the what's the date today seven the seven yeah yeah so by the 10th and uh that one is called wavesafterwaves.org because that's what my ministry is out of life coaching and out of Mm -hmm. my ministry is um because depression comes in waves after waves or even god's goodness comes in waves Mm -hmm. after waves yeah so um because sometimes you can be like, man, I thought I was just over this. And another wave just comes, you know. Mm-hmm. So that was how I always described it for me. Wow. And um, so that's why it's called wavesafterwaves.org mm-hmm. because there's a bigger picture to it all. But I would love to yeah. join in with, with someone's journey with life coaching and um, help them get to where they want to go. It's amazing. Awesome. So cool. So, yeah. For all of you watching, we'll have all the links that Jamie just shared in this post. So you can just click it and uh, go oh, straight cool. there. Absolutely. I want to take away any barriers from somebody connecting with you because you are incredible. Um, You've already been an encouragement to me. And I know that you're encouraging so many women um, at Becoming Me.TV. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story and um, encouraging us to become who God made us to be. I really, really appreciate it. Well, thank you for letting me.